uh, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about how to navigate Unity and some shortcuts that even some people who are pretty knowledgeable with Unity don't know how to use. So I guess the very first thing I want to do is get you familiar with what each of these tabs are. Um, there are more tabs that you can add if you go under the window menu. All of these are things that can be added as tabs, but for now we're going to leave it with the base ones. Uh, first is the scene. The scene is kind of a, a bird's eye view of what's going to be uh, possibly in your scene. You can see a representation of the camera, and then there's a white box that represents the bounding area of the camera. If you go over to the game view, well, the game view is going to show everything that's within that white box. Um, there's an asset store link where you can get free assets and tutorials and stuff, but I'm not going to be covering that today. Uh, in the scene view, you have a couple different options. You can, the wireframe and shaded wireframe, that's more for if you're doing 3D. Most of these are stuff that you're probably not going to use very often. Uh, right now our scene's in 2D, but Unity is a 3D engine, which means it's always in 3D, even when it's faking a 2D. So if you click this little button here, you can flip from being in uh, 2D to being in 3D. And then if you click it back, you're back in 2D. And if you're in 3D, this button is here as well. It allows you to look at things um, orthographically. Uh, this little light here uh, allows you to use scene lighting. Again, the way that we're running our 2D scene right now, we don't need to worry about that. This allows you to toggle audio on or off if there's an audio listener in your scene. And this allows you to toggle on and off your skybox, fog, flares, image effects. Again, this is usually something that, except for image effects or particle systems, this is something that is reserved mostly for 3D. And gizmos, you can kind of define yourself. Um, these gizmos can be things that allow you to see animation, animators, joints, um, lights, particle systems. Um, these are all gizmos that are useful at one time or another. For now, we're not going to be using them, though. Uh, off to the left here, we have our hierarchy menu. The hierarchy menu is everything that's currently in the scene. So currently in the scene, we have a camera and we have a game manager. This game manager has no sprite attached to it, no image. So when I click away from it, you can't see it, but it is in the scene. And when you click on something that is in the scene, the inspector window over here on the right populates. Um, everything that's a Unity game object has what's known as a transform associated with it. So everything that's a Unity game object has a position in three coordinates, X, Y, and Z, a rotation in three coordinates, but these three coordinates are actually turned into what are called quaternions, and then a scale on the three axes, scale meaning size relative to its original. Um, Every scene has to have a camera. If we take the camera away or even turn it off and switch over to the game, no cameras are rendering. So every scene has to have a camera to show the user what's going on. Um, right now, there's, there's two basic versions of the camera. There's orthographic, which is what you use for 2D scenes, and there's perspective, which is used for 3D scenes. The difference is orthographic scenes, everything appears the size it is no matter how far away from the camera it is. So something that's one unity unit tall that's right next to the camera appears to be the same size as something that's one unity unit tall that's 10 units away. If you use a perspective camera, that's not true. It uses the camera's, um, what its perspective would be if it were in the real world to resize how the object is displayed on screen. If it's orthographic though, everything is the size it is. Uh, the size of the camera is the distance from where the camera is to the top of the screen, and that's five unity units. Uh, clipping planes, near and far, these are again mostly used for 3D. This, um, if you've ever played a video game and had your camera get stuck in a wall, um, and then you can kind of see through the wall or even through your character, it's because of what's called the clipping plane. The camera uses, um, <laughs> this is going to be a super complicated term, frustrum culling. Uh, and if you paid attention in your geometry class, you'll know that a frustrum is a cone with the tippy tip uh, knocked off. Uh, essentially, imagine your camera view like a cone going out from the camera. The near plane is that tip that it's chopping off. So stuff that's 
very near to the camera, um, how far away from the camera it is, where that kind of buffer zone where you don't see it. And then the far clipping plane is how far that cone extends. Or it's not a cone, it's a frustrum, which is a math term I'm sure you thought you'd never hear again. Um, uh, we're not going to deal with depth or rendering path uh, or occlusion culling. Uh, HDR is on by default. There's some effects that only work with HDMI, but it's fine. Um, Anti-aliasing, you don't need to turn that on. Uh, target display, target eye. We don't need to worry about any of that stuff right now. Um, down here, we have our console. Uh, we were using this bit last time. The console uh, allows you to receive error messages, uh, give yourself debug messages. If you send something to print to print line, it'll print to the console. So this can actually be super useful um, in figuring out what's going on in your script at any given time. The project window. And this is your main assets folder where all of your things that are going to be added to the game need to be part of. In the assets folder right now we have scenes, which by Unity 2018.1, they auto-populate this. Previous vers versions of Unity don't do that. I have a scenes folder and a sample scene already. And then I created last time, or time before, a scripts folder and keep the scripts in there. You don't have to have a folder structure in here. You can just throw everything in the assets folder, but for a project of any kind of size, it gets really messy really fast. So you want to make sure that you're disciplining yourself to use, um, to use good folder habits to keep yourself organized, especially if you're working on a team with somebody else. Um, okay, so that's the basics of the Unity window. Now there's some, oh yeah, I forgot to talk about these up here. So um, this tool is the move tool, it allows you to move stuff around. Uh, the next tool, actually I think this is technically called the pan tool. This is the move tool, which when you click on an item allows you to move it. So I can move my camera around, or I can move it straight X, Y, or sorry, straight X or straight Y. And if this were in 3D, I could move it straight Z as well. Um, this is the rotate tool. So it allows you to rotate things. So you can kind of see how I'm rotating it here. I'm gonna do that really quickly. Um, this is the scale tool, which allows you to change the scale of an object, which on a camera doesn't change anything. So I'll just undo that really quickly. Um, this tool is called the, uh, I think it's called the pivot mode. Or is this, yeah, this is pivot mode. Um, this tool allows you to resize things. Let's get an actual game object in here. So there's a few different ways that you can create game objects. First, you can go over here in the hierarchy, choose create, and then you can create a game object from this menu. You can go into the hierarchy, you can right click, and you can create a game object from this menu. And you can choose game object from up at the top, and you can create a game object from here, or you can press, oop, nope, Cancel. I guess that specifically just makes a new scene. All right, so I'm going to press the create button. I want a 2D object. I'm going to create a sprite. And this has no sprite associated with it by default. So I'm going to click right next to it. So I've got sprite, where it says none. This little thing that looks like, for lack of a better term, a nipple is called the circle selector. Um, you can press that to see if there's anything in the project that would apply to be a sprite. And in this case, we have this background rectangle, check marks, drop down arrow, input field background, a knob, a UI mask, and a UI sprite. I'm just gonna use the UI sprite. And I'm gonna kinda zoom in here. So this, um, this mode here, which is the rect tool, sorry, and then that's the pivot tool. This is the rect tool, um, which allows me to grab it from a side and use that to resize it. If you'll notice over here in the scale, these are changing, and so is the position, the XY position and its transform. The XY position relates to its center, so as I'm resizing it, I'm changing where the center is, which means I'm changing its XY position as I'm changing its scale. Um, yeah, okay, so that's that's that tool. Undo a bit there. All right, cool. 
So let's talk about some shortcuts here in Unity. Um, I'm going to grab this sprite and I'm going to call it thingy because uh, I'm descriptive like that. Now, one of the most often used uh, shortcuts in Unity is to duplicate. So if I highlight thingy and I press Control D a couple times, you can see over here on the left that I have a bunch of different thingies, but you don't see them in the scene right away. In order to see them, if I just grab and pull away, I've got all of these thingies. So many thingies. I guess it's just five or six. That's not that many thingies. Um, so Control D is the um, the first Unity shortcut that's super useful for people. The next one that I think is pretty useful is let's take one of these thingies and move it kind of off to the side here. And I'm going to put it on exact coordinates. So I'm going to put it at uh, 0, 0. So here it is right here. Now when you're moving stuff around, you can see how it in the XY coordinates, it's fractions and decimals. Super not great. Sorry for that weird cut. Um, another thing too I just realized, if you move a piece around like that, um, or if you do anything that you want to undo, the basic undo command is Control Z if you're on a Windows PC or Command Z if you're on a Mac. So if you want to move things just a specific increment instead of moving them um, freehand, if you hold down Command on a Mac or Control on a Windows PC, uh, let's go to the Move tool so that we can actually do this. Um, you need to be in the Move tool, not the Rec tool. Um, command on a Mac, Control on a Windows PC, and drag. Oh, ha, that's why. It's because my I was so zoomed in. So let's try that again. So if I hold down Command and drag, I'm dragging only by one unit increment. I had thought that this was one unit, but it's a tenth of a unit. So Command and drag allows you to pull stuff around in discrete units. And you can change this in the snap settings, which you can find under the... Um, Edit menu, I think, project settings, and I think snap settings is in here. Mm. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's right there. Snap settings is right there. So you can make it so that it snaps um, more or less than one if you want to. Uh, okay, and then let's see what else. Oh, yeah, so we've got all of these thingies here. Let's grab a couple, let's move them all near each other, and make sure that we're on the move tool so that we can use this. And if I want these to fit together nicely, if I pull down the V key while I'm over it, you can see my cursor will snap either to the center or one of the edges. And I can use this to drag it to uh, another vertex. So here, it's matching that vertex there. So I can use that V key, especially if you're well, 3D too, uh, whenever you're working and you want things to go directly to each other's vertices, uh, you don't have to hold down Command or Control, just V, and then um, make sure that you're in the Move tool, and you can move stuff around specifically to the vertices. Now, also in Unity, you can use um, Control, or sorry, not Control, Copy and Paste. So if I copy these, I can Command-C to copy them click somewhere else, Command-V to paste, and I've made another copy of what I had before. Sorry about that weird cut. So if you are somewhere else, but you're looking at an object in the inspector and you want to bring that object into your focus, if you double click on it, uh, then your uh, view in the scene will automatically align with that. Um, let's see what else. Oh yeah, so each of these tools up here has a quick key. So if you want to go to the, and it's in general, it's the row above the home row. So if you want to go to the pan tool, it's Q, uh, or you can use the middle mouse button in 2D. If you want to go to the move tool, it's W. If you want to go to the rotate tool, it's E. Um, if you want to go to the scale tool, it's R. And um, if you want to go to, uh, I forget what it is for, the rect tool. Is it T? Yeah. And then it's Y for that last one. Okay, cool. 
So it's the row right above the home row. So uh, today we've gone over um, basically how Unity is laid out and some basic shortcuts for using Unity. Um, feel free to ask any questions in the description down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when my videos are posted. Uh, I also have a Discord channel that you can join if you have any questions at all. And yeah, I hope you have yourself a wonderful day.